What is the best way to mount your all-in-one water cooler in your computer? There's so much misinformation out there. I'm gonna show you exactly how you should mount your all-in-one cooler and put all of these lies to rest. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. You guys have found this channel because you're curious about how mm. to mount your all-in-one water cooler. There's so much information on the internet, so many different configurations, there's so many different ways that people have mounted them, and they work. And they all jump onto forums and they say, this way worked for me. Oh yeah, well this way worked for me. But there truly is some ways that are better than others, and there's some ways that you should just straight out avoid. We're going to cover some of those configurations that you should definitely avoid. We're going to cover the configurations that I personally recommend. And you're going to say, Anton, who the heck are you? And why do you think that you know something that all these other guys that are so much smarter than you have already talked about? When I see those videos, they leave out certain info that I think is just important. And when I look at what some of these people are recommending, I just, I'm blown away that someone would recommend this and that nobody calls it out. Some things that I expect. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. First of all, I expect people who know more than me to put comments and tell me how much they know Okay, that's a given. So I'm really looking forward to the comments. If you have an opinion about what I'm talking about, throw it in the comments, let's talk about it. Try and be respectful. Like we don't wanna call people names, just tell me your opinion. This is a basic all-in-one water cooler. Now these are actually quite ingenious, if I must say so myself, because it's a fully sealed unit. You don't need to do anything, you buy it, it comes like this. Now at a basic level, this is similar to what your car has. There's a radiator here, it's full of water. There's two hoses here, and those hoses go to this guy right here. Inside of here, there is a pump, a little pump, and you've got a thermal transfer surface that connects to the processor on your computer. I have seen people mount these on your video card as well, and so these, all these do is pull heat away from something. It doesn't matter what you want to pull heat away from. Technically, if you wanted to, you could build one of these to mount on your RAM modules, your hard drive, anything that makes heat. You could mount this on your cell phone to keep your cell phone cool, if you wanted to. The function of this is strictly to take heat from one area and move it to another. That's all it does. With that in mind, your processor on your computer generates heat, a lot of it. In this computer right here, we've got the 13700 processor, which needs to have a lot of heat dissipation. This guy right here is a single 120 millimeter all-in-one radiator with fan, and it's capable of pulling somewhere around 180 to 200 watts of power out of whatever it is. Now that's a measurement of heat loosely. I'm gonna try and avoid a lot of the technical information and that's gonna make all of the technical people go bananas. They're gonna be like, Anton, the technical information is what matters. No, it doesn't. Keeping your computer cool is what matters. How it keeps it cool doesn't really matter, okay? If this kept my computer cool, I wouldn't care how it did it, I just care that it does. What I do know is that it didn't keep that cool, so I swapped a bigger one in and now it is cool. The details don't matter, how it happens doesn't matter, but there are some things you can do to make it do a better job. The basic functionality of how this works, so you've already seen that there's these pipes. There's a radiator full of water, there's a pump here that's also full of water, and there's two tubes. Now one tube's going to transfer hot water over to the radiator. The radiator will cool it down and then cold water will come back in to the pump and it circulates it through. So we always have nice cool water flowing over our processor. Think of it like on a hot day in the summertime and you go and open up the freezer and stick your head in the freezer. 
that's what it's like. We've got a mini freezer here, and this is really, really hot because we're trying to push a lot of heat out of there. Something I want you guys to understand, first of all, is thermal dynamics. Thermal dynamics is about dealing with changes in temperature. Now we have two different temperature zones. We have a processor that's hot, we have a cooler that's cool, and we have a radiator that's also hot. All we're doing is transferring that temperature. Also, you've seen a hot air balloon, right? You've seen someone blow flames into the hot air balloon. The hot air gets hot and it gets hotter and it gets hotter and eventually it gets so hot that it actually wants to rise up and it carries the person in the basket with them. You already know hot air rises. Well, guess what? Hot water also rises. There's a reason why when I held this like this, I said that the hot water was up here and the cold water was down here. And that is because the hot water wants to come over to here. And you'll notice there's a, a top and a bottom here. We put the hot water in the top of the radiator. And I'm gonna turn it this way now so you can see. The hot water wants to rise, but as the water cools, the coolest water is gonna go down to the bottom. Always, there will be things that will adjust that to create different zones, but if you do this right, if you install this right, the hottest water will always be at the top, the coldest water will always be at the bottom. Now, what is our goal with running this thermal transfer device? is to cool down the processor. You want the coldest water possible going through here so that we can have the coldest water possible cooling down our thermal transfer plate. And then whatever warms up to, who cares? It will warm up because we're trying to pull the heat away from our processor. And then the hot water comes up here. If it's hot, it stays up top. If it's cold, it'll drop down to the bottom. Keeping that in mind. There are certain configurations here that will work with thermal dynamics and there's certain configurations that will not. A lot of people say to mount your radiator up high. So we'll have our processor, our cooler right here, and we'll have this guy mounted up high. That's okay. But what about, we have different orientations. We can have up high like this. We can have up high like this. We can have up high like this, or we can have up high like this. I commonly see guys mount their radiators this way. Now, remember what we talked about, hot water rises? If we have both our line in, our hot water in, and our cold water out on the top, what temperature is the water coming out of here? Hot. The coldest water is down here at the bottom of the radiator, and it's just sitting down there. We're waiting for the whole radiator to cool off and the water to go back up before it comes back down. It's it's not gonna do that. So we're trying to cool a hot processor with warm water rather than if we just rolled this over so that the hot water went in the top, we could pull the cold water off the bottom. This cooler will suddenly cool your processor way more, way more. Now it's important to know which way your flow is. Now the biggest challenge that you're going to have is how do I know if this is the out feed and this is the in feed? How do I know if I want my radiator this way with this one on the top? If this is supposed to be the cold line back in and I've done it this way, the hot water is gonna come in the bottom, it's gonna bubble up the top and I'm gonna suck it right back in before it cools off. That would suck, right? So if I'm not sure and there's no arrows, there's no arrows on this thing to say in and out or anything, there might be a way to find out exactly which way is in and out. But if you're not sure, all you gotta do is unbolt this, flip it over and do it the other way and see what happens. If it runs cooler, it's better. Then now you know that the bottom one is your in to the pump, the cold water, and your top one's the hot coming in. The other thing you could do if you really wanted to is mount it this way with both on the bottom so that the hot water is gonna rise up and the cold water is always gonna come down. You do run the risk of short circuiting where you'll have the hot water just go across here and get sucked back in, but it should generally rise up and then it'll flow in a circular fashion like this where hot water comes in, it goes up, it cools off, comes down and gets sucked back in. And if you really don't wanna spend a lot of time tinkering on the bottom like this is the configuration for you. It also has the added benefit of 
if you get air in here, you have some evaporation, you don't have as much water as you thought you did, all the air is gonna be at the top and you have no risk at all of sucking air into here and developing hot spots. Some people mount their all-in-one down in the front of their computer, something like this, okay? That is a straight up no-no. Air rises to the top, always. If you have any air in this system, it's all gonna be up here in your pump. It won't work. Don't do it. You always want to have part of your radiator higher than the pump. Ideally, you want it like this. Well, even that, so you don't want any part of the system higher than the, the highest part. So even if I went like this, the tubes were bent, there's a chance I could end up with air in here and you could airlock. You'll stop sucking water through and you'll have problems. So you always wanna make sure that your lines are lower than the pump, like that, and your radiator is higher than your pump, at least some part of it. You could get close to the same if you wanted to risk it, but if you had a lot of air, you could still run the risk of having air in your, in your pump area. We can go like this, and I know that all my air is now up here. I know it. Now, if you're doing like mine, you can see mine's actually mounted on the top there, like this. So then the question becomes, well, which way is right if you mount it on the top? Thermal dynamics still apply, actually, in this configuration, okay? So at this point, it doesn't matter which one's hot or which one's cold because the hot is gonna rise up to the top and it'll actually circulate similarly to what I showed you. So it'll circulate like this and then the cold will come back down. If I had a choice, the preferred way would be to go front or rear mounted, ideally, with your water lines sideways like this, cold on the bottom, hot on the top. That's the ideal. If you can't get the ideal, then do it with both lines on the bottom is the next ideal. That's the best way to do it. You know that your air is up here, the processor is always gonna be lower and it'll work the best. Now, the questions you're gonna have, and this is the thing everyone says and I see everybody saying it. I've mounted it this way and it seems to work fine. I've mounted it that way and it seems to work fine. You have certain tolerances where you can mount it wrong or you can mount it less efficiently and you'll be just fine. The newest generation of Intel processors like this guy, the 13700, will expose inefficiencies in your cooling. You need at least 280 TDP of removable thermal transfer. Like you have to have a cooler that can handle at least 280 TDP. That's a rating. When you're looking up all-in-one cooler, look for at least 280. If it's more than 280, you'll be okay. But 280 is under optimal. If you have a cooler like this guy right here, which just barely does 280 if I'm lucky, I think it was rated at 280 exactly. If I mount this inefficiently, I still will not get the 280 TDP of cooling effect and that chip is gonna still thermal throttle. If you have a older, a 12th gen, 11th gen, 10th gen, and you have one of these big 240s or a 320 or whatever, you can mount it however you want and it will still cool because it's such overkill. But compare it to the tires on your car. You can drive with the tires on your car at 20 PSI. You can drive with the tires on your car at 30 PSI. You can drive with them at 40 PSI and you will still be able to drive the car. But if you're driving around with your tires at 20 PSI, you're driving around with 20 PSI of air in your tires, your car will still drive, but you're gonna use way more gas. You're going to struggle to get up hills and to accelerate. And you're also gonna wear out your tires faster because you've actually deflated them. You're not running your tires at optimal levels. And that's what we're talking about here. You can have the warmer water coming into your cooler and still cool the CPU to a certain amount, but you're not cooling it as much as you could be. And a cooler CPU is a happier CPU. So you want to make sure that you are optimizing 
your all-in-one cooler. Some of you might be saying, well, it seems so complicated. Why don't I just do an air cooler or a heat pipe cooler or a different style of cooler? For me, since all-in-one coolers exist, they're the best coolers to get. I've seen some really good high TDP rated non all-in-one water-cooled coolers. But if I had a cooler in there, where's the heat going to go? The heat just goes inside the case. Now I need lots of fans to help pull the heat out of the case. Whereas my radiator is mounted right in the top here. If I stick my hand up here, the heat is coming right out the top of the case. So all of the heat from that processor is in this radiator and I've got a fan on the backside that's just pushing it all out into the air. So it actually warms this room up. It's winter here in Canada and this room gets pretty cold, but because I've got that computer running away there, it actually keeps the room nice and warm so it's comfortable so I can sit here and talk to you guys forever. And I know you're sitting here watching this video like, holy crap, you are talking forever. Shut up. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.